Hey folks, Sean here from VisibleDark.ca. Welcome to this video. Uh, today, we are going to just do a quick look at um, how you can do dynamic background extraction quickly and easily in uh, PixInsight. Um, this is something that uh, I sort of came up with. Um, I've used it many times on images. Uh, it works very effectively in most cases. Um, there may be situations where you need to modify your approach to dynamic background extraction, but DBE uh, is not that difficult to work with. Um, and if you try this way that I'm going to show you, you might find it's really effective for a lot of your uh, situations. Um, give it a try. Let me know what you think and uh, comment below. Um, let's go over to the computer. Uh, before we do that, thank you very much for all the new subscribers. Uh, I'm almost at 4,000, which is fantastic. Really excited about that. And um, thank you for all the uh, existing subscribers that uh, have been uh, with me from the beginning. And I uh, really appreciate you following along. Let's go over to the computer and I'll show you uh, my little uh, DBE trick. All right, so here we are uh, in PixInsight. Welcome to my computer screen. And uh, we are going to open dynamic background extraction. And I'm going to show you how to do a dynamic background extraction quickly and easily and effectively. So we have dynamic background extraction open. Once we open it, we want to click on our image to get a crosshair. So we now have a crosshair on the image. We're going to change the tolerance to 2.0. We're going to change the shadows relaxation to 6.0. What's this doing? It's simply relaxing the model parameters so that they're not too strict. Uh, very relaxed. This is going to work in our favor. Um, next thing you want to do, we can minimize that and we want to open sample generation. This is where I found that using larger sample radius is actually very effective. Um, in fact, it's, uh, it, it seems to work a lot better than using these small squares that default in uh, the dynamic background extraction. So what I normally do is, it depends on the image of course, but I normally will use um, anywhere from 50 to 150 as my sample radius. And what this is going to do is put sample uh, points on the image, and they're going to be large squares. They're not going to be small squares. So um, if I can just demonstrate the difference, first of all, if I use the default, um, you see how small these are, right? We're just sampling a very, very small part of the background um, in each of them, um, not very much at all. And uh, that's not really, I haven't found that to be very effective. So let's make it uh, a little bigger so that we're sampling more background than we are stars uh, because you don't want any of these sample points over um, large bright stars uh, to begin with. Um, but if we can sample more background area, we're going to get a more effective dynamic background extraction. So um, what we'll do is we'll change this to 100. We're going to leave the samples per row at 10 and I'm going to click generate and we're going to see what happens. So the size of the boxes have increased considerably, as you can see. If we take that to 150 and resize, we get a very large box. Now, this is going to work in our favor because even though all these black dots are stars, we're still sampling more background than we are stars by doing it this way. These large squares, these large boxes, um, are a very effective way of capturing more background. So this is going to work in the uh, model image generation for the background, uh, which will be the, um, the background model that is going to be produced and applied to the image. Now, let's leave it at 150. One thing that we need to do to make this very effective is... We're just going to do the outside. We're just going to sample point the outside of the image, the outside edge. We're not going to do anything in the middle. And how is this effective? Well, let's uh, have a look and see. So what we're going to do is we're just clicking on and deleting these sample points. It's hard to see with the uh, green on green. You can actually change the color if you want. 
uh, over there. I'm not going to bother though. I'll just uh, delete these. I can see them on my screen. Uh, just be aware that I'm deleting all the inside sample points. And all I'm doing is leaving... Whoop, I deleted that one. I want to keep that one. I'll have to go back and add that one. Um, all I'm doing is... Oh no, I didn't actually delete it. It just was green. I couldn't see it. <laughs> um, so anyways, all I'm doing is deleting all of the uh, sample points inside of the image, leaving only the outside of the image with sample points, sample boxes, okay? Now, next thing that you're going to want to do is sample generation uh, can be minimized. We want to go to target image correction. We're going to click or select, I should say, we're going to select division. Division is going to get rid of any vignetting in the image that hasn't been resolved by your flats. Um, and we're going to discard the background model because we don't need to see it. And we're going to replace this target image. We don't need to create a new one. We just want this image to have the background model applied to it and, and fixed. One thing I should do just before I click OK or click the green check mark is I'm going to drag. I'm going to click and hold on the blue triangle and drag it off onto the workspace. This is going to create an icon for me. And this icon is a, is a duplicate of what I've got set up here. Uh, not only in the dynamic background extraction window, but where the sample points are placed as well. So I can easily reapply this uh, in the next step. So now that we've got division set and we're going to replace the target image and discard the background model, we're going to click on the green check mark. And this is what's going to happen. That's going to happen. And that's fine because it applied the division to the target image as a, a correction. So what we'll do is we will close off dynamic background extraction. We will reset the screen transfer function and we will apply the screen transfer function again. As you can see, the image has changed considerably and we're going to use this icon now to apply subtraction to the image. And as you can see, simply by double clicking it, it applied all the sample points again where I had placed them. Ooh, I missed one right there, but that was okay because it was in the in a background area, so that was all right. But we'll just delete it for now. Um, it placed it all where it was before, and all of our settings are the same. So that's a quick and easy way to reproduce your dynamic background settings uh, if you have to. Uh, we're going to select subtraction. And we'll now apply subtraction to the image. Subtraction is going to remove any gradients that exist in the image. And once that's done, it's a subtle difference, but it does make a difference. Once it's done, you're finished. Your dynamic background extraction has been applied. And we've got a nice uniform background with no gradients and no vignetting in the image. Now, this works equally well. This is a galaxy image. Um, just to show you what uh, happens if you use, uh, say, auto background extraction, you'll see the, uh, the difference that uh, DBE has over auto background extraction, especially with uh, galaxy. In particular, M31, I find it happens quite often. Um, if we use, and I'm not recommending auto background extractor, uh, because dynamic background extraction, I just showed you a really easy way to do it. So uh, there's no need to use automatic background extractor anymore. But if we did use it, if we did apply division and discard the background model, replace target and apply that to the image, this is what we're going to end up with. That. Um, not very good. So that's not what we want. So there's no need to use auto background extractor. Uh, if you think auto background extractor is easy uh, or easier, um, try the uh, the way that I've just done DBE, and I think you'll uh, find that it's uh, pretty straightforward and, and simple to uh, grasp um, and uh, and take advantage of and utilize. Um, this works. This technique that I did uh, for dynamic background extraction works equally well when you're dealing with images that have a lot of nebulosity in them. So here's the uh, Horsehead and Flame Nebula. This is a monochrome uh, H-alpha image that I took. And um, the uh, 
the, the, the problem that exists here for us is that the nebulosity is throughout the entire um, image. So you're not going to want to place sample points on any bright stars or um, you're going to want to try and avoid as much of the nebulosity as possible. You don't want to sample the nebulosity necessarily um, within the image. So uh, placing the sample points around the outside edge actually works very effective in minimizing the impact of of uh, placing sample points on top of nebulosity and uh, it ends up correcting the image quite nicely. So right now we've got a gradient happening from the uh, top left corner down to the bottom right. Uh, vignetting doesn't seem to be too much of an issue but we're going to apply division anyways and just uh, just to make sure that we're correcting any problems that exist in the background. Um, so what we're going to do is we're simply going to repeat the uh, the process again just to show you um, how easy dynamic background extraction is. We've got our image open, we click it, get our crosshair on it, it means it's active now. We're going to change the tolerance to 2.0, we're going to change the shadows relaxation to 6.0 and again this is just very relaxed model parameters so that they're not being highly restrictive in nature. We're leaving the smoothing factor at the default and we're going to set up our sample points now and we're going to start with 100 leave it at uh, 10 for samples per row and then we'll click generate and we've got our sample points now i want larger ones than that i want to sample even more background than what these background samples are sampling uh, so let's increase that to 150 and we'll resize all. That's better. We're getting uh, larger boxes now. These larger boxes are really effective, I find, in sampling the background. Uh, and all we have to do now is just delete the inside ones. This image is uh, its easier to see the boxes. It's not, uh, it's, uh, not green on green. So we'll just remove these real quick and all I'm doing is just clicking on one and then the others automatically get selected and I can hit the delete key so it's uh, it's fairly quick to remove them and that's it so now we are just sampling the outside edge and we want to move you see this one here is sitting on that uh, bright star a little bit we'll just move that over slightly so it's off of that bright star I don't see any others that are on really bright stars and we're ready to go with the target image correction. We'll do the division first to remove any vignetting that exists. And before we do that, we're going to just create an icon of our setup for this image with uh, DBE. Now we're going to click the green check mark. It's going to apply the division to it. We can close the DBE window, reset our screen transfer function, and we can already see that it's applied the background model to the image um, and it looks uh, quite a bit different. You actually see the nebulosity over here on the left side where it wasn't very apparent before because of the gradient that was happening. But we still want to do subtraction so we double click on our icon. It places the sample points back onto the image exactly where we had them. We're going to change it to subtraction. Leave this the same. Click the green arrow. Subtle difference but it does do a little difference, a little bit of difference, probably very hard to see in the video, but it is a very uh, very subtle difference that's applied to it using subtraction after the division. And your image is done. You have now successfully applied dynamic background extraction to this image. That wasn't too painful at all, was it? So give it a try and see what you think. Let me know if it works for you. And like I said, um, this works in the majority of situations, I found it to be a very effective way to, to use uh, dynamic background extraction. Um, but you may have to change it up a bit. There may be uh, situations where you have to add in more sample points, and, and that's fine. But this will get you get you started. This will be a good start. And this is a this will be a nice way to do dynamic background extraction, aka DBE. Uh, DBE, I think, is a lot more effective than the uh, auto background extractor. That's my opinion, but I like using DBE. I didn't grasp it the, when I first started using it. It was a little difficult. Um, I got some help on that, of course, uh, from mentors that I have learned from, and um, I'm now passing that information uh, on to you, that help on to you, um, so that uh, maybe it can help uh, with your images and your processing and make things a little better, a little easier. 
Fantastic. So there we have it. We are done this one and uh, I hope it was uh, useful. I hope it's helpful. Um, thank you again to all the subscribers. If you found this video helpful or any of my other videos and you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Please consider liking this video. I uh, appreciate that very much. Thank you again and clear skies everyone.